Hola, and welcome to another episode of the Get Closer podcast and the platform for conversations with industry business leaders talking about decisive leadership, niche services, and insights. I am your host, Jackie Crick. Today, we speak with Belinda Harrison of BL Harrison Law, LLC. The conversation will focus on her achievements as a business owner, the balances that must go into running a legal practice, and how to effectively market legal services to those who need them. Belinda, it's great to have you here today. Thank, thank, you, thank you for so, joining us. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. So let's let's just get started. Um, Tell us a little bit about your, how you got started, some background history about being in Washington, D.C., sharing an office in Kansas City, and everything in between. So sure. we'll, we'll be asking some questions, okay. but first just get us started with <laughs> sure. getting to know you. Okay, sure. I'll give you a little bit of background. Um, I, me becoming a lawyer was not born out of any great desire or passion for the law, so I hate to disappoint any anyone out there who holds those idealistic dreams. Um, unfortunately, I got divorced um, from my from my husband at a very, when my son was very young, and um, I wanted to ensure that I would be able to provide a life for him. At that time, I didn't even have my undergraduate degree, and I was raised in a very um, conservative home, so I was, I was embarrassed to come home, divorced with a child, no degree, no real money. I didn't want to be a burden on my parents. So I thought it was a long drive home from where I lived to where my parents lived, and I thought, okay, what do I have? What can I use? What can I take advantage of? And I thought, well, really the only thing I have is I have a, of a good mind, I have a lot of grit, and I have amazing supportive parents. So I stopped at a grocery store on the way on the drive home with my son to, to load up on provisions, and at the checkout counter there was a magazine, Newsweek or one of those types of magazines that rated the top professions, the top paying professions, against the number of years it took to get there and how much it cost to get there and, and the payoff. And so I'm, I'm looking at that in the, in the checkout line and um, I saw that, well, a physician takes a lot of years. I already had a child, and, uh, but an attorney only took three years after, after you got your bachelor's. So I thought, well, that, that's doable. I think maybe I could do that. Didn't know a single attorney in my life, didn't know anything about the law, just saw what they would likely make, saw the number of years it took to get there, and thought, okay, that's what I'm going to do. I wanted to arrive home with a plan. I didn't want to arrive home empty-handed and say, here, you have to take care of me. I, so I, that's what I did. And from that moment, I just followed that path um, because I didn't kind of grow up in that generation where you got to love what you do and you've got it. It was more what needs to be done. Just get it done. Right. I had a kid. I had responsibilities. And so I, I went home and I told my parents, this is my plan. I'm going to live here for a year, establish residency, go to school in state, you know, start working right away, finish my undergraduate, go to law school, boom. And that's exactly what I did to the day when I kind of mapped out my, um, my timeline. That's how and why I became a lawyer. So um, I ended up going to law school in D.C., so that's why I have a connection to D.C. I went to American University, and I would drive an hour and a half one way with no traffic. When anytime you had a rain or a, a, hit a speed bump, there is, there is, it added quite a bit of time to your drive. But I did that um, for the first year. The second year, you could kind of squish your classes into a couple of days so I didn't have to drive as much. But for all three years, I did that drive. Um, and worked in some did some internships, and ended up taking a job with a firm in D.C. upon graduation. So that's how I ended up in D.C., and that's what my connection with D.C. is. Never moved to D.C., continued to do that drive, because if anyone in the legal profession knows when you're low man on the totem pole, your hours are crazy. Mm -hmm. And I did not want to um, place my child uh, with child care. Nothing's wrong with that, no judgment, but for me, I didn't want to put him in child care that young. And so if I, if I lived at home, my parents would help out. And that was the next best, best thing for me. So worked a lot of long hours, was on the road a long time, um, tried to juggle that uh, as best I could. And when it started just to get a little bit too much, an opportunity opened up in Missouri, of all places, to, um, I was invited to come in house and be general counsel for a company. Um, and uh, so I took that job. It was hard. It was hard to move away from my family and from the area. And to be at without a support system for my son, but by then he was 
believe he was 10, so it was a little easier. He could tell me how he felt and how he was being cared for, if he had to go to after school care, what have you. So we moved out to Missouri, and I, uh, I, did, I finished raising him there in Kansas City area. I worked for that organization for about six years. Got a little restless, decided I wanted to go back into firm life and joined a, a large law firm and big firm law is a whole nother animal. And along the way, you're picking up nuggets and experience. Yes, and yes, exactly. Learning other things yeah. and understand, kind of falling into the things you like to do more. Correct. Yes. I mean, you, I don't, to be honest, I don't know that I ever fell in love with the law, but I came to respect it and appreciate it and know how to work to work it and work within the guidelines, not just to make a living, but to make a difference and to help people and to understand kind of just how the world works. Um, so, and I honestly, I never thought, do you like what you do? It was just, this is, this is your job. This is what you have to do. You have to provide. You have to be good at it because why wouldn't you? Um, and and uh, yeah, so I ended up at, back in a, in a law firm. And then from there realized I don't love this. And that's when I opened up my own my own firm. Well, so. that was my next question. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so, right into it. so how, what was the thought process from going to working at a law firm to really taking the plunge and saying, I'm going to be a, a business owner, I'm going to start my law firm, and this is what I'm, what was the planning and the thinking behind that? So a couple of things. Um, one was not my, my plan. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't really understand how big firm law worked. I was naive in that way. I had worked at a law firm before, but it was a smaller, smaller boutique firm, and then at general counsel, you're not billing hours and doing that kind of thing. Um, I understood that we had certain hour requirements, and I understood that the level I was hired in, I would have to have to bring in clients, but not quite at the level or the pace that they expected. And so that was on me. I think I should have done more research. And so at the end of my year, we had a, we kind of had a, a talk um, about, are you billing enough? Are you bringing enough of clients? And and uh, it was decided that it really wasn't a good fit. So that's okay. It was the first time I'd ever had a situation like that. You're so used to excelling at everything you do. But it wasn't just that. I realized I don't enjoy this. This is, And that's probably why I didn't do as well as I would have liked. I just didn't enjoy the environment, the pressure, the, the, the decision, the things you had to do. There was just a lot to it that was not a good fit for me. In the meantime, I had gotten an offer from another firm. And I thought, do I want to go back in and do this all over again? Or... Do I want to do something different? And I had some some friends that had started a law firm, and they loved it. They loved it. They said it's the hardest thing they've ever done. They've worked harder than you know than the demanding hours of a you big set law the firm. Terms. But it's your terms, yes. right? It's your schedule, your terms. You live yes. and die. You make all the money. You lose all the money. You make the decisions about the clients. And at that point in my career and my life, I thought that was what was right for me. So um, I took a couple of jobs just to supplement income because again, I had a child. Um, by then, Paul was 16, okay. so the car and the insurance yeah, and coming up on senior expenses. year, all the things. So yeah. I, I worked a couple of jobs until, you know, until I was able to support myself on my own firm, with my own firm, and um, and, and that was that. I, it took off, and I, and I haven't looked back since, so that's what I've been doing since. Wow, it's amazing. Um, you had a vision to be very uh, strong in your beliefs. Not going back home and asking your parents for anything. Correct. You <laughs> self-made, went yourself through school and brought your son up. And from stories you've told me, which we will not catch today, <laughs> uh, very nice young man. So tell us about uh, what type of law did you start practicing and, and did you waver from that, one, that type of law or was that sort of a transition type of uh, practice that mm -hmm. now is what it is today? That's a great question, especially for, for people thinking about becoming a lawyer or young lawyers. Um, they come from all walks of life and all backgrounds, and, and you know you may have attorneys in your, in your family or you may know attorneys, so you may have a better idea of, um, of what that life was like. As I said, I did not. So I just thought it was all litigation, which you see on TV, courtroom and litigation. So my first job was, was as a litigator in a, uh, for a small boutique firm that did federal class actions. And it's, it is what you think of when you think of attorneys. You're writing briefs and you're arguing in court and you're, you know, all the things that go along with that. And I didn't really know that there was much to anything different out there. So I just, I started doing that. I was, I started learning from all of my um, uh, associates, my counsels, my colleagues, and learned how to write and learned how to argue and all the things that you'd learn. Um, 
and again realize I really don't love this. Uh, it's <laughs> you put a you put a lot of t- you put years in your life into a case, and then it's all left up to a judge mm-hmm. or to a jury, and you do the best you can, and you do everything you can to, to persuade them that your position is a correct position. Um, and sometimes that works, and sometimes it doesn't. And it is a horrible feeling to walk away from two, three years of your life, you know, with a verdict that it's not in your favor. It's a tough game. You have to really have a thick skin. You have to really understand why you're in it. You have to bring some balance to your life so that's not all you have, which, again, is difficult, especially if you're a young attorney because your hours that you're expected to work, you know, are crazy. So I digress. So anyway, I when I went to work for um, the association I was general counsel for, I realized, oh, there's there are other things. There's transactional law, you know, where you're where you're d- reviewing contracts and just giving advice, and you're acting as the person that's coordinating and and being proactive and reactive. You don't have to be litigating. I really enjoyed that job. That was that was a lot a b- lot better fit for me. Um, but it was almost too easy. I started to get a little restless and wanted a little bit of challenge. It was perfect for the time frame of my son because I could be home in the evenings. I could be there for everything he needed. It was really the perfect fit for the, for that time in my life. But by the time he was 16, he's getting a car, he was with his friends, he didn't need mom around so much, and that's when I transitioned back out and realized, no, I really this really isn't for me. I really don't want to do this. Now in my current practice, I do do litigation, but I do a lot of transactional work. Now I do um, I act as general counsel for a lot of small to mid-sized companies that can't afford their own in-house counsel or the big firm names. I do a lot of nonprofit work, and I love that. That's my favorite part of my practice. So I'm 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 actually working to transition kind of out of litigation and give that to my colleagues and associates, and then just uh, just focus on the on the corporate side on the transactional Exciting. side. Exciting. And um, how many folks do you have working with you now? Well, I have you? I have. Um, contract and what we do it on a contract basis so any I have we have assistants and then I have two two to three attorneys that we work with depending on the load and, and what we need so they're not actually employees of my firm but we all just kind of right. contract with each other and work together well it sounds you've created the perfect environment for your lifestyle exactly. uh, from the time your son was small yeah. now he's out of the house yes. on his <laughs> own and now you are doing so many other things yeah and balancing yeah, pretty exactly. much the types of work that you do. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. That's really, really good. So if you had to go back, what would you change? Just one thing. Just one thing? Just one thing. Um, I think I would have I think I would have researched it more. I would have tried to get more information about what the profession was gonna be so that maybe I was more directed um, and more intentional about the area of practice I went into. I, honestly, it was just for me to get a job, get a good paying job to be able to take care of your son and not be a burden and provide a life you know, for him that you don't have to. I didn't need to be wealthy, but I definitely didn't want him to be the victim of my bad mistakes and being just a, another minority single mom that couldn't provide. Um, so I, I honestly didn't give a thought to what kind of law I wanted to practice. I just needed a paycheck. I needed to be a lawyer. So I think I would have been more intentional about my options and, and, and thought more about that I have options and I can direct this a little better. I think that's probably what I would have done, more research. I can definitely relate to having to do something because you need to be responsible. You have responsibilities, you have lights to uh, turn right. on and your rent to pay and things mm-hmm. like that, and especially when there are kids. So I definitely relate to not the option, but the necessity mm-hmm. of things. But you did really well because you chose a wonderful career. <laughs> Thank you. Really, I, yeah. I, I could not even think about wanting to be a lawyer. <laughs> so th- something in the back of your head was saying definitely you want to be a lawyer, maybe not a doctor, as you said. But right. you were sort of yeah, going down that path, and yeah. you've done really, really well. How in the years of you having your, your law firm, how have you been able to gain – customers that's usually a challenge it right? is it is and interest it's interesting that I'm on here talking to you about this because I actually don't do any advertising um, I'm kind of from the old school when I started practicing it was legal to advertise it's been legal since the Supreme Court ruled in it I think it was around 77 that states could not impose restrictions on attorneys advertising at that time a lot of states did they didn't find it they thought it to be seemly they didn't find it to be professional and it could be misleading and so many other things and uh, some attorneys challenged that and then it went up to the supreme court and and, and eventually they, they found that it's a violation of free, free speech nonetheless it took a long time i think for 
the acceptance for it to be widely accepted and and when I went into law practice it really wasn't it still wasn't that widely accepted so I didn't grow up with that mindset to grow up in the law and when I started associating with younger attorneys that that's all they know like they what they doesn't even cross their mind that there would be an issue and that's of course how every business these days has to has to survive by self-promoting by social media by you know advertising by whatever means um, I still don't do it and it's not because I have a problem with it anymore it's just you when you when you haven't done something you, you continue not to do it and because I've been in the practice for so long and know so many people honestly mine is a lot of word of mouth right. I mean I do have a website don't get me wrong I'm not that I have a yeah, website yeah. and I um, but but I don't actively do anything to promote my firm it's probably something I should look into word of um, mouth yes it's just word of mouth really, reputation and yes, word of mouth absolutely and, and I think that's I important uh, yeah. especially in the in the field of law yeah. a reputation is your that's your everything. basically is everything is your everything. marketing is your everything yeah. so yeah you definitely yeah. kudos <laughs> to you let's step away from um your work okay for a little bit sure and tell us what do you do to decompress and something for fun sure so things that I really enjoy are I love to cook I really love to entertain and I love to cook and I uh, like to redo furniture my mom and I mm -hmm. both buy and upcycle strip paint stain all the all the things furniture so those are the two biggest things right now I'm renovating my house so that's part of it we love that we love every bit of everything's crooked everything's a little wrong <laughs> everything's a little off but we're doing it ourselves so um, we're really enjoying that uh, but those are the things that I really love obviously spending time with family and friends but to really take my mind to a different place I'm either cooking you something or I'm working on a piece of furniture something that takes my immediate attention and has instant gratification because the law doesn't have that it takes you know months years sometimes to get a result and you're you know you're writing a brief and you're researching and you're doing something that's so cognitive and that takes so long to see any kind of fruit of your you know of your efforts you don't know if it's right you don't know if it's wrong you often know yes this is good I did a great job but but you don't get any feedback well things like cooking and working on something visually that you can see the difference right away is just such a great change of pace and it's really refreshing and, and fills your soul so there are two things that I'm taking away from that I need to go to your house <laughs> visit you for some good for a good meal absolutely and also visit you to see what else you're restoring to see if it's something that I would like to exactly take to my house, you'd be right? more than welcome I love yes. both those things so <laughs> definitely we connect in that, at that end um, so we talked earlier when we were setting this session of the the podcast about show and tell yes <laughs> and I don't know what it is. Maybe you want to tell us. That what, was the hardest what, part of this because I never, th you know, what is what I think your instructions were something that kind of encapsulates you or shows who you are and bodies. I'm like, I, I just am a mom and I work. I don't, I don't really know. I re reached out to my son. I'm like, what do you think I should take? I don't know. <laughs> and it was literally this morning uh, when I woke up, it came to me. I'm like, how did I not think of that? So I will show you what I brought. I can get to it. I love it. So something I don't believe I've told you, or I may have and forgotten, um, I'll show you and then I'll explain why this is what I brought. So I have two chef's knives. And the reason I brought them, one, because it embodies what I, I love, love, love to cook. But the main reason is my son made these oh, for me. Oh, fabulous. He is, um, by profession, he works for on a, on a joint task force with the FBI doing um, cyber crimes investigation. But he has a side business, and it's, it's actually much more than a side business at this point. But he has a very robust business as a knife maker. And he doesn't make these for his business. He just makes these for mama and special friends. He, there are other kinds of knives that he makes. But he handmade these beautiful knives, and this was intended. I have a Mont Blanc pen that was one of my oh. first pens as an attorney as a reward, and so this matches my Mont Blanc perfectly down to the pins and the. It's a Greta Garbo, so it's got the the, the bone color and the the craftsmanship mm -hmm. on those knives is beautiful. Yeah, and then this is just some of my. These are some of my favorite colors. So, I'm 
so proud of him and and just every day that I use these uh, it just thrills me he learned to be a knife maker on his own just really YouTube and teaching himself and the way that you know that you do and he's turned it into an amazing business I'm so proud of him and so this embodies my work with my child and the things I love to do That's which are cook beautiful. <laughs> so it's full circle full again circle. right yeah you're cooking yeah. and now you have the perfect utensils yes exactly I don't know if you would call that the yeah. tools yeah yeah I think to so. make the perfect meal yeah Yes, yeah, fabulous. I think about him every day fabulous. when I see them. Yeah. Is there anything else you'd like to share with us today? Oh, gosh. Not really. I don't really think I'm that interesting of a person. I just, you know, do what I'm supposed to do. You, you just get up every day and go to work and do the best you can and hope that you can find a little joy. Um, I'm at a stage in my life now where I think I can pivot a little bit and try and finally start to think what do I want to do what do I enjoy versus what do I have to do so that's a new stage of life for me and I'm enjoying that being having the the ability and opportunity to just explore a little bit more and ask some questions and maybe redirect what I do so stay tuned well I've enjoyed spending time with you Belinda and I would just want to say one thing my takeaway for Belinda today in our conversations and our friendship is love for family love for your own child, mm. right? <laughs> yes. Which we both share. Uh -huh. And bilingual also, mm -hmm. which we both share. Belinda speaks Spanish as well. You would never tell because your English is perfect, <laughs> unlike you. mine. But <laughs> it is fantastic having you here today. Thank and you I so love much. learning so much more about you. Belinda, tell us how can folks interested in learning more about you uh, reach you? Sure. So I have a website, BL, my initials, blharrisonlaw.com. You're welcome to go to that website. I am on LinkedIn as Belinda Harrison. Um, and I do have, I believe I have a Facebook page, but that should tell you how much I'm, I don't think there's really much content on that. And I know you're going to scold me for that later. Uh, but yeah, probably the website and LinkedIn would be the easiest ways to get a hold of me or to, to ask a question. If you're interested in anything I'm doing, please reach out. I'd be happy to talk to you, answer you any questions. If you're looking for someone really personable to help you, <laughs> call Belinda. Uh -huh. Thanks, Belinda, Thank once you, again. It's great having you. Thank you so much. And here you have it. I hope you enjoyed our Getting Closer with Belinda. For now, keep paving your path forward, lead with purpose, and don't forget to dream high. Remember, there's no ceiling, only opportunity. Hasta la próxima.